You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help State others. Say your with name the for the record. D code. Are you coming D dot code? Where did that name come from? Uh, growing up, I played a lot of football, like from six years old to like senior year. All I ever wanted to do was play football. Like uh, music wasn't even like the route for me. So, what was your highlight in football, man? Uh, kick return, punt return, uh, running back. I really just be, you know, doing my own thing. So you played for the city and the school? I played for the Woody Hawks and I played for Murphy High School. Those are the only teams I played for in my life. And D Cole come from football. So with my last name, well, you know, playing Madden, and then when you make in your last name and your creative player, I will always put D period Cole. But when I start rapping. I emphasize the dot, so it turned into D dot code. You feel me? So what do nine, ten, ten mean to you? Everything. That's home plate. <laughs> That's where I'm from. Like a lot of people, the city they from, they really wasn't born in that city. They was born somewhere else and then brought to like a city wherever they was raised. But I was born and raised in Dory. And my parents met in Dory across the street from where I was born. <laughs> so that's home roots for you. Yeah, yeah, that's the city. The Wardy Amaro here. Yeah. So can you tell us <clears throat> a, a highlight of your high school days? Something uh, that stick out through your whole four years in high school? Uh so what stick out. Um I always did me. Like I didn't care about what nobody's anybody that went to school with me that tell you like I always did what I wanted to do. I wasn't no follower. Um I just played football, you know, I stayed out the way, and, um, yeah. So you say you just played football your whole high school career, man? Pretty much. So and I, I start I start making music, like, on a serious note, like, probably, like, the end of junior year coming into my senior year. So you have football music? Yep. So where did you find all this time going to jail, man? Where did that come in at? Man, that's, that's a big... Uh, all right, so boom. Growing up, like my mom and my dad, they gave me everything. Rest in peace, my pops. Um, they gave me everything as a kid. But as soon as I hit 18, it was like, you're not getting Nathan. Like, here go $100. Like, do your thing. So with me, like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to just go get what I want. And, you know, it wasn't the best decisions. but So basically, yeah. they, they threw you out there, fan for yourself. Not like that, but it was like I was getting everything I wanted to a point to where when it stopped, I didn't want it to stop. So, you know, of course, I done had the moments where my mom had to come to the mall. <laughs> we still in clothes, doing all the, all the shit, man. Yeah, I remember like, those days. I said, yeah. Oh, my sister, come pick me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out my, uh, shout out, shout out my, uh, my rally BG. We both had got cracked at the uh, Ontario Mills. We both got big bags, and uh, we both get, get blurped. And uh, they like, nah, y'all come back this way. And I had a football injury, injury in my hip at the time. I couldn't run. He could have ran, but he didn't want to leave me. So we both got cracked, and uh, the officer pulled pulled one of us out and was like, um, so what happened? Like, I was like, man, he had nothing to do with it. It's all my stuff. This, that, and the third. He bring me back. He bring him in. Uh, he say, after after he pulled him back out, he come out, he say, okay, one of y'all lying because both of y'all said, uh, this is all your stuff and the other person ain't got nothing to do with it. So <laughs> it just showed how niggas was solid at a young age. I was probably like 16, 17. Yeah, that's good because you, you can't catch that these days, man. Nah, nowadays, shit. Yeah. 20, 2019, niggas telling on themselves. Yeah. It ain't, you don't even need no crime me to tell on you. Niggas tell so, so who got you into music? How did that come about? Um, my older brother, he made a, he made a lot of music. Um, I have to say, uh, Baby Rock, I don't know if you interviewed him before. Um, I talked to him at an event. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He um, he was rapping since he was probably like, I don't even know. He, he cracked it off young, though. But I would see my older brother and his friends, like, gravitate to him because, like, 
he was like this little kid with this little voice, but everything he said was like way past his time. Like he was like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like talking about something. Yeah, yeah, like on some on some real. So I seen I seen the uh, engagement in that, and uh, I, I I wanted to I wanted to get involved, and that's the only thing my big bro really did. So I really kind of wanted to be around him more and his friends. So. I kind of started making music, this and that, and uh, it went from there. Like I just did my own thing, but them two, like uh, my my uh, my older cousin Ken, uh, that's where I got the dot from, where I emphasized the dot because he went by K dot before there was like yeah. before Kendrick was really even out, and I ain't even saying like I fuck with Kendrick, but that was the first K dot I knew. My my cousin Ken Kenneth Cole, he from Pasadena. So, uh, did you lose a brother, man? Did I lose a brother? Yeah, as far in the as the streets. Um, my my brother Taryn, which was which was really my cousin, but you know that to me that was that was my brother. Rest in peace, T. Um, he he died in a car accident. And so, we'll talk to us about this Blank Jackie movement, man. So the Blank Jackie. Pretty much that I cracked that off in 2013, and uh, I was just thinking of like titles, and uh, somebody had said something to me, and I was like, "Blame Jackie," like, and then it just went somewhere else, and then you know I start realizing she the reason like I'm really out here working so hard because ever since I could remember, she been working like my whole life, like. Like literally since I can remember, I remember my mom going to work, going to school, you know, having four kids and trying to do it. Like, you know what I mean? And uh, I always wanted to put myself in a position to where she never, ever had to work again, ever. So um, it's always been like, if niggas is mad, blame Jackie. You feel me? Like, if you mad that I'm here, like if my existence, you don't know, fuck with it, blame Jackie. Because, you know what I'm saying? She birthed me. Uh, <laughs> And so, uh, it so, always boiled down to her, you feel me? So who writes your songs? I write my songs. And I feel like it's crazy because you got to say that now because a lot of niggas ain't writing their shit. Like, I kind of want to put on my album cover, like, written by D. Cole because, like, you really don't know who writing shit until, like, it's being said, like, who writing? Now, I heard a couple of your Black Jackie's albums. Do you plan on switching your style, just jump on the wave or this new to today's music? Never. Never. I'm not... Fucking with nobody wave. I got my own waves, and I, it's it's a lot of hard work to put them in. So I wouldn't create my own waves to jump on somebody else's wave. And um, you know, I feel like that's what niggas is doing. You know, but when that wave start not being wavy no more, <laughs> niggas is gonna find themselves in a like real critical situation because you know they biting off somebody else's shit. And when it's from here, like that's when it's gonna stay with you. And you know what I mean? Niggas could tell from the foo foo artists to the real niggas, you know. Now can you take us through the music making process on how you get it out your head and into a final project? <sighs> with me, it's like sometimes I don't gotta hear the music, but when I hear the beat it kind of tell me what to rap about and what to talk about. That's why when I'm feeling certain type of ways, I look for certain type of beats. But as far as my writing process, whatever the beat tell me to write, that's what I'm gonna write. You know, I'm gonna feel it right when I hear the beat. Like, I'm gonna start feeling whatever it is. Like, but um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much how to go with me. But if I got some shit like, some shit that I'm just thinking about, I just jot down it. I got a gang of ideas in my phone. Like, I got a gang of bars in my archive that I just go back to when the vibe is right. So, what what is your biggest challenge as an artist? My biggest challenge as an artist is not, you know, doing the fugazi shit for attention. You feel me? Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like that's the norm nowadays. Like, I'm not never finna go out my character to get attention. So me? basically, you won't run around be boot gang and nah. draw attention to your music. Nah, not at all. That's not me. And if it's gonna take a little longer for me to get on because I'm not doing that, I'm I'm fine with that. Like I'm cool. I'm 
because at the end of the day, this all this shit is therapeutic to me. Like, I'm doing music for free. It's some niggas out here, they not really artists. So when they making music, they getting frustrated because it's not happening for them. But when you really on your grind and you really building, building, and this shit is really you, and like, I do this shit for free. But you know what I'm saying? The point that I'm at, niggas gonna have to pay for this. <laughs> but so, so you're at the point of doing music for free because it's therapeutic to you. Yeah. So what is your ultimate goal at the end of this artistry? I feel like what everybody goal is is get into that Super Bowl musically and fuck the Super Bowl. Um, but um, the highest point is what I mean by Super Bowl. Now you everybody say the highest point, but it's two different points. Are we talking about fame or fortune? You right. You right. Which one would you rather have? Um, I feel like if you famous and a lot of people know you, it's easier to get a bag wherever you go. But and I feel like if you got the fortune, if you make some bad business moves, you could lose it all. But if you famous, you could you could you could stay on for, you know, you really ride that for the rest of your life. It's a lot of niggas that have, you know. So that's kind of a hard question. I don't know. If I had to pick between fame and fortune, since I feel like I'm talented, I would pick fame because I would need the eyes on me to show them what I could do. But if I pick fortune, I could just invest in myself. You know what I mean? Exactly. But so, if you're already famous, that means you already got them. So I heard that you was a voice of this dope app. Talk to the people about the app. Study tracks, man. Study tracks. Um... Uh, I link with some great CEOs uh, from the UK, and uh, they doing some amazing stuff over there. Um, I was fortunate enough to audition for them, and you know get the part. So um, I'm one of the leading artists, and for the American side, because there's three study study tracks. So study tracks UK, which were cracked off. Study Tracks America and then Study Tracks France. So basically, what Study Tracks is, is imagine you're in school and you gotta take your SATs or whatever. Any any important exam. This could even be homework or classwork. So the stuff that you need to study, the actual information, I turn that into music for you. So I pretty much rap the music to over a dope beat, and it just gets stuck in your head like. You ever had, excuse me, you ever had like a song that you hate and it like just because you've been hearing it, it's just been stuck in your head? That's yeah, the like same. Yeah, like the ABC song yeah. with the kids. It's yeah, that, that's the same thing with Steady Tracks. And like, they always get lost in LMLOP. <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, the repetition is what gets you. And you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's real dope. And, you know, shout out George and John. You know, Alex, they've been doing their thing. So you um, already reaching out to help the youth better yourself yeah 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 i had a chance to uh bring it to my uh high school moravia high school and um when i told them what i was doing they wanted to link immediately and uh you know study tracks we all came down and um i was in we was basically like in the class with the ipad showing them around how to, how to use it so basically you got all the subjects there you just click on one whatever lesson you studying you just click on it and Literally, you can make a playlist. You could, you know, it's changing the way you study. Like, yeah, instead of having your head in a book and you studying all night, you got your earphones and you on a court. You feel me? You shooting threes or nigga, you babysitting and you still studying. Yeah, as you could be washing be. dishes. Education should yeah, evolve. Uh, be evolved. Exactly. Yeah. You could be in traffic and you studying through the ox, you know? So it's really changing, like, the whole wave of, like, the way kids are studying nowadays. So, so on Blame Jackie 3, man, you got this song that reached out to the youth. What inspired you to do a song like that? So I was at uh, Morovia High School presenting study tracks, and the principal and a few other um, faculty members, they came up to me and it was like, you know, we, we know you, you're doing music. Like, do, are, do you have anything for, like, you know, to motivate the students. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I'm motivating the streets right now, which you mean? <laughs> so like, but I was like, you know, I like a challenge. So uh, I was like, yeah, give me like a week, a week and a half. So I went home, I made what I made and uh, I let them listen to it. They was rocking with it. And uh, when it was time to perform, it was wilding, it was acting up. 
and it was crazy because that was like pretty pretty much like my first time like performing there like and i'm like the only they there was like i'm like the only one that ever came back and got it cracking like that i don't feel like i don't feel like even if anybody else go that's from that went to Morovia high they went and performed it's not gonna be the same reaction okay also i was listening to a track man you went to maxwell elementary with warm and bruce man what's bruce, the story behind that bruce. man y'all made it sound like elementary was on Oh, it was cracking. It was cracking. Uh, so, uh, Brozy, like a legend in Dewarty, um, he died real young. Rest in peace to him. Um, Worm, he doing, uh, I forgot how much time he got left, but he grew up on the same street as me. And them two together, like, just as far as Morovia and Dewarty go, like, they was some real, like, like, I probably, in our generation, they probably, like, had the most hands. And, uh, you know, at such a young age, they was respected by, you know, a lot of people. So, um, yeah, man, I went to, I went to elementary with them, man. Rest in peace, Bruce. Well, let's, let's touch on you doing time, man. What, what did you learn from doing time, sitting down there doing time? <sighs> man, I learned a lot, man. I really, uh, when I was in there, um, uh, I learned a lot, man, like respect. When you go to jail, that's the one thing you're going to learn is respect. You're going to learn to respect other people's space. You're going to learn to just respect people, period. And it's different because in a county, everybody's shooting a fade. Like, you see a enemy or whatever, and you shoot in a fade, whatever. But when it's like you get to the pen, like, the black people come together. You feel what I'm saying? And I was fortunate enough to be at a pen where um, it was, like, 70% blacks. Because, you know, like, when you in a county... They, the ratio to black Mexicans yeah. and whites is terrible because they know if they put too many of us in one dorm or anything, we run and shit. So they always try to keep the numbers low and they always try to, you know what I mean, have us at a disadvantage, like even when we at our lowest point because they know how like vicious we is. Like, and not saying in a bad way, but like, like we not tolerating nothing, like, you know what I mean? Uh, so we, we take so you go to the pen jail time you learn respect so what about these youngsters on the streets you think they have respect and that's where they majorly fell in that that they don't know how to give respect I feel like it's I feel like it's not a lot of people respecting each other out and, and not just youngsters like older niggas too like but one thing that shifted is like everybody's so quick to grab a gun they like nobody want to get out no more you feel me like or they get out and then end up like coming back to air shit out or like just mad because they they hands ain't up to par but you know what i mean that's i think that's why a lot of people shooting nowadays because they can't fight you feel me but yeah but once you get in jail you have to fight so you exactly. fucked up either way and it's a lot of niggas that 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 got their chest out that ain't really did no jail time like that. So is it really true that you did time for not talking? Um, I wouldn't I would I wouldn't say that. I would I would just say I was put in a situation to where I I didn't want to tell on pretty much basically I didn't want to tell on who was giving me something. So I got receiving stolen property and uh and some whole other weird shit. But I wasn't gonna tell him like I'm not like I, that's not in my blood to do that. So whatever came with the consequences, I already knew I was just gonna, I was just gonna deal with it. So let's get back to the. Difference. And that's not even on no like, on no gangster shit. That's just like if I'm fucking with somebody, I'm not gonna just because I get wrapped up. I'm not gonna let them know the whole get out. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly, bring it down to hold everybody down with you. Yeah, like just shut up and do your time. And exactly, it good. and get out and continue yeah. to do you. So, what, what was your favorite time? Favorite time you performed? One of your favorite performances? Uh, probably, it'll probably have to be two. It's up there with um, I performed in Pasadena at this Artist of the Year competition. This is when I first started really taking music serious back in '09, and like Soldier Boy saying a lot of niggas like following him and his steps and all of that like but i got proof nigga i was in the source magazine and i was shouting out my myspace link myspace.com slash decoder great like i've been doing that like you feel me of course 
he been on this shit at a major level doing that, but like niggas been doing well, that. Well, he, he claims saying? he was on YouTube first. He probably was, yeah, you but know. fuck that nigga. <laughs> he, but I mean, he got a lot of points though. He got he got some facts. He just he just going about it like a, a weird a weird way. Does it bother you that you haven't reached where you wanted to reach yet? Um. Sometimes I'll be having them days where I'm like, man, I've been putting in so much work grinding. But at the same time, I've been in situations where I let myself get in, get in, get in, get in front of what I say, like get in front of uh, me stopping myself. You know what I mean? Like in and out of jail, uh, like this last, like, like, Two years, I ain't dropped nothing. You feel me? In 2017, I lost my dad. You feel me? That shit was crazy. Like, it just happened out of nowhere, bro. Like, that shit just happened. Like, you feel me? Yeah. Uh, he was supposed to go in and just get a, you know, a little surgery and end up being complications with the surgery. He thinking he gonna be in and out and it didn't happen like that. You feel me? So does that make you look at health different? Like, would you take care of your health more? Well? Definitely, definitely. Since, you know, I see what my dad went through, like, I'm definitely more cautious on, you know, what I put in my body and how it's going to affect me during the long term, like, during the long run. So you say you, you vegan? Nah. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to be vegan. <laughs> but, uh, you know, because uh, I, I feel like a lot of vegans be getting sick because they don't be, like, getting... The, yeah, I mean, the natural the protein person, from somewhere else, like cancer or some shit like that. Like, they have, they was healthy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, nah, like it really like you know, changed me losing him. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but like um, like when my dad passed away, like I was the one who cut his hair for his funeral. It was just me. Yeah, my, that must and, be tough, yeah. and, and my nigga Fresh, Fresh World, that's my producer. He make all my beats. And shout out to him, too. Like, he, he another talented artist, exactly where I'm from. Free from Morovia. He doing his thing. And, uh, you know, so you this year, y'all going to see a lot of, y'all going to see a lot of Your him. next project, you going to feel that emotion coming out about your pops, you think? Uh yeah, I feel like the next couple projects, cause like you know I, I'm feeling a certain type of way. Like I said, I went. I mean, cause, I mean, not to cut you off, cause you listen to Play Jackie Three. You talk about your grandma, you talk mm -hmm. about your moms. You, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Your pops. You really express how you feel. So yeah, I can't wait to hear the new project. Oh yeah, I'm definitely uh diving into that. It's actually called Cowboy, and I'm looking at March. But it's gonna be any time, any time between March, early April. But yeah, like I really had to go to the mortuary and like cut my dad hair. Like they walked me to the room he was in. He was sitting on like a metal table. Like it was crazy, bro. Like I ain't never been in like nothing like that, you know. And they just walked us to the room. Like it was me and my nigga Fresh. And uh, they was just like, all right. And I just had my clippers in my hand. And I was just put on Blame Jackie three. And like I just start cutting his hair, like, and I felt like you know just that alone right there, like, you know, like I've been I've been through a lot, bro, like, and even just dealing with that, like, that, that shit, wow, bro, like. I mean, at least he gave him a gift, man. He gave him his fresh ass cut to heaven. Oh yeah, you yeah, know? he went to heaven fresh. When my mom passed away, I, I put on a grind face T shirt on her ass. Oh, that's right. You know what I'm saying? That's she right. Was the first one to have it, rocking grind face. That's right. You know, a and lot of people didn't agree. That's with a it, that's a but, whole new audience for you too. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people didn't agree with it, but shit, who paid for it? Yeah, fuck, fuck who who don't agree with it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, on this new project, man, you have any female rap collabs coming up? Yeah. Shout out my um. My sis Nicole, aka Rose Gold. Um, I feel like she the hardest out the. I, I want to say the hardest out the West, but I don't even want to box her like that. Like she, like she gonna be the hardest. Like and mark my words, Rose yeah. Gold. How, how do you she find from her? She's from Pasadena. Uh, my dad actually uh linked linked me with um one of his homeboys at the time, uh Lil Snipe, and um. 
He from Pomona, actually. Um, I think you know. Yeah, him. I know Lil yeah, Spike. Yeah. yeah, shout out to and, Lil Spike. And um, he um, he he she was a part of his little little squad. And um, when I first went to when my dad heard I was rapping, he hit up one of his homeboys that was doing the music thing, and we kind of linked, and that's where I met her. And that was back in like '09. So you feel me? So do you feel like your city be overlooked since there's not too many hot rappers that came out from your camp? Um, definitely. I feel like my city overlooked, period, on everything. Like, you know, sports, um, singing, rapping. It's a lot of talented people where I'm from. And I feel like the it's like L.A. and then I.E. A lot of niggas don't know where you got to pass to get to each. You got to pass where I'm from to get to LA if you're coming from the nine. Shit, that's if they take and the 210. Niggas take the 10 all the time. That's true, but you still, <laughs> it's still San Gabriel Valley though. Like that whole Pasadena to Pomona part, I feel like it ain't nobody on a major level that's really doing that shit like that. And that's why it's open for like that, 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 that new king spot. I, I don't even feel like it's an old king besides Sugar Free. If you really want to say who really like at the top of the, but as far as yeah. San Gabriel Valley, you know, and a lot of people who don't know what San Gabriel Valley is, that's that's in between LA and the IE. So that's kind of like the glue to like, kind of like both of them. You feel me? I mean, but your music getting out there, man. I remember uh, comment posting your your video, man. I, I, how did you feel when you woke up and you seen your, your shit on comment page? It was. I still don't even believe it. I still don't believe it. I I was uh I was doing postmates and I was doing like uh I was I was going hard. I was like working probably like a uh a, a eighteen hour shift or something like that. When I seen him it was I was probably like on my seventeenth or my eighteenth hour. And um I remember like I was on like the little scooter and like I pulled over, I'm like, bro look like common. And then I kind of just like whatever it is. And then I seen him really like coming out and walking. So like I kind of like pulled into like an alley where like he was coming out of this cafe in Hollywood. And um, he was coming out and like I kind of like seen him coming. He was coming out of like this little cafe in Hollywood. And when I seen him coming, uh, you know, I had like two thoughts either. I'm gonna just walk right over there and be like, you know, what's cracking? Like, what's the deal? Like, I'm gonna rob this nigga. This and <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Common good people. Uh, so I was like, either I could go and like, you know, say what's happening and all of that, or I could like kind of peep the scene and see where he's going and catch him by itself. So where I parked that kind of was really like right next to his whip, and I didn't even know it. So I, I'm kind of like through the alley, and he like kind of down walking up towards me. So I'm finna come and meet him. And I see him coming up by by himself. He walking towards the alley, and I'm like, "Cool, I'm gonna play it back." So I'm you waiting. And you just playing a perfect lick. <laughs> you feel know I me? Mean? Like, <laughs> if I was on some shady shit, it, it was opportunity. But nah, he good people. He good. He real good people. So I see him walking up, and I'm like, "Um, hey, you know what's the deal? Like, I know you don't like walking. Like, I know you don't like people just like walking up on you like that. But like, let me spit for you." And then, like, he kind of, like, pointed at his food, like, you know, I just got my food, like, you know, I'm kind of, like, you know, finna. And then I was like, oh, no, nah, no, nah, say less. And then he was like, matter of fact, man, spit. And then I just started, you know, every time I miss, nigga, I had to get my rebound. Had to tell the snakes in my circle, nigga, keep out. Middle finger with the index, nigga, peace out. I was on some cocky shit. No hands on IP now. I be down, I bend down. I know beat dogs and real looks. I know niggas who had no enemies but got smoked. I know niggas who be looking real rich but real broke. And I know niggas really change for the fame, but I won't. I remain the same. Lane to lane, aka Mr. She let me fuck off my name. It's a game. And they play a lot, nigga. I've been in that. You feel me? So. So did he show it on his video? Or how, so how did the video get on his Instagram? So I was rapping. And uh, when I finished, he was like, ooh. Like, he pulled out his phone. And he was like, you got to run that back. Like. And then he just started recording me. I'm like, this shit is not happening right now. Like, this nigga. And then I just started recording again. And um, he was like, yeah, that was official. And then he, like, gave me some, you know, some words of wisdom. 
told me like you got it like you know keep at it this this that, and the third and uh you feel me like at the time like as soon as i pulled up like my phone was dead like i can't get no like nothing so you feel me like that just happened and like i'm trying to finish my postmate shit but like my phone died because i'm doing i'm yeah. i'm trying to you know show my i got bars so i'm like looking like a chicken with my head cut off trying to figure out who this food go to and i'm walking in different and then i come back out and he uh he kind of waved me down it was like yeah like so like you know what's your name this and that and we got into deeper detail and he was like yeah man stay tapped in this and that and uh you know he told me he gonna reach out and uh yeah man the next and i was like the day before father's day and then so, on father's day he posted me so like in a way i feel like that was my pops like like giving me that extra little because you know it happened on father's day like when he posted me on his page he did not out of all of the shit he could have posted yeah. like he posted me on father's day like that's my pops it ain't no hey, way around hey. so do you feel like your life changed after he shined some light on you uh yeah like and kind of like in a crazy way because i feel like a lot of niggas was like kind of like acting a certain kind of way like no none of my homies hit me like it was like Hey, that's official, like, and not that I want niggas on my dick like that, but it's like, if I know a homie that play basketball and I see Kevin Durant post a nigga, like, I'm gonna hit him, like, nigga, stay on your shit. You feel me? You feel me? None of my, besides me calling the the ones that I call to reach out to, nobody really contacted me. Like, at the end of the day, niggas don't want to see you win, man. Niggas don't. That's that's why. That's why when 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 I get to that certain place, it's like already uh, my energy is gonna be the same. Like you feel what I'm saying? And then you in Hollywood. Yeah, it trips me out, man. Because when you treat people how they treat you. Then suddenly you in Hollywood. Yeah. You turn your back on the no, head. Nobody hit me. A lot it's of like, people now don't get me wrong. A lot of people was um showing love. A lot of people was showing love and shout out everybody else showing love because they didn't have to repost me. They didn't have to talk about it. They didn't have to do nothing. But I felt like I was putting the city on. You know what I mean? Exactly. And and you know what I'm saying? They 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 respected that and they know I held it down for where I'm from, you feel me, at the end of the day. And it's like I don't know. I'm not expecting nobody to do no favors for me, no handouts. But like, you feel me? Like, just like I said, like, if <laughs> if a homie that I know is playing basketball and Russell Westbrook re, re uh, just posted the nigga, I would you know reach out like stay on your shit like a lot. Because it's a, a small lot of, goal, man. It's just yeah, goal, like. Yeah, and that's like somebody at the at the you know common. He won like three Grammys. And because at the end of the day, he heard your freestyle. He wanted you to run it back so he could re- record, record it. Record it exactly. And he posted on his thing. On exactly. His exactly. So he's actually validating you. Like this. That was shit like a little hard. cosign. Yeah, yeah. Like like I'm I'm fucking with this young nigga. So how how do you deal with writer's block? Um, I don't. When I'm not feeling it, I just stop. Because when you force it, that's when you start hearing the fugazi lines and like that extra weird shit. Like so, whenever I'm not feeling it like that, I just like I cut that shit out. Like and I get back to it. I got a gang of like bars in my phone where it's just like it ain't it ain't finished. It'd be like nine bar verses, twelve bar verses. And then I get back to it when the time is right. So I got over it. I got my archives is crazy right now. So do you ever plan on making your son dream come true? My son's dream, yeah. dream come true. Yes. Uh, well, like when he get older, or well, he wants you and his mom to get back together. You see uh, that somewhere in the future, man. Oh, uh, I see you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that was off that a lot to lose. Um, and I and I and that's kind of crazy. I stated that like. He's so young to where I can't tell him the real, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, me and me and my son's mom, we got a good relationship and that's kinda like where I wanna keep it. Like no drama, you know what I mean? We we had a cool little co parenting stance right now and uh it took a lot to get there, you feel me? And uh you feel me, I'm happy with that. Like, you feel me? She cool, she a good mom and uh she she do everything she can for him and you know. It's the same with me, and I just want to keep that good energy. I don't want to, you know what I mean, be having a girl and, and yeah. messing with my baby mom. Like, that's the iron with the messy shit. So why did you stop putting out music? 
uh, I lost, I lost my pops, man. Like it was, it was, it was a time where like when, when he, when he went to the hospital, I left everything I was doing and I went straight to his house and I was just in the hospital every day. And, um, it was hard. Like, you feel me? I'm, I'm leaving the hospital. I'm coming back to his house. And then, uh, I was living there probably like six months prior to him, uh, like passing away, you know? So, um, I ended up having to leave there and like, you know what I mean? And they just visions of seeing my pops on that metal gurney like that. And like me cutting his hair, he like kind of blown up a little bit. Like it was, it was just crazy for me. Like I kind of went through some, some shit. But shout out, shout out my nigga Fresh. You know, uh, can you identify some of your crimes that you did dirt with? Y'all did links and shit with? Uh, I plead the fifth. <laughs> I plead the fifth. How did your city shape you as a man? Um, that's kind of a, uh, that's kind of a, a crazy topic because where I'm from, Rovi and Dewarty, I feel like we the only city so, well, when I say Dewarty, I always bring up Morovia because it's like the twin city. So like Morovia, Dewarty, Dewarty, Morovia, that's really one city all together. You feel me? Um, so one city can't stand by itself? Is that what you're saying? Not that, but everybody in Dewarty be in Morovia. Everybody in Morovia be in Dewarty. Okay. As far as the urban community, blacks. Um, and... You know, we, we was really pretty much raised differently. Like we was raised by um, a lot of good men. We was raised by gang members. We was raised by, you know what I mean? By the streets, by, you know, what we seen in the streets um, and kind of like, you know, took from that and did our own thing. It was a time in, I've, I remember like a little kid like playing for the Hawks like and this is like you know everybody from Morovia Doherty like you play for the Hawks that was like the thing you feel me Little League Doherty Hawks that's why orange to me to this day orange should always be one of my favorite colors just because what it represented you know what I mean if you're from Doherty and you don't you know uh feel a certain type of way when you see that color then it's like you really wasn't a part of the culture because orange is a big color in Dewarty and that's because of Dewarty Hawks you feel me and um basically it was like we was probably pretty much the only team ever probably to be gang banging on other teams like we was really we had a chant that we did after every game Win or lose, it was uh, one, two, one, two, three. Let me hear that do rock beat. Do rock, what's up? Do rock, and that's what we would do as kids, like, and not knowing, like, of course we peep game as we got older, but like playing flag at seven, eight years old, playing grim, like, you don't really know what you're doing, but we really was banging on everybody team, like, and and I didn't notice that till I got older. So you and feel what I'm saying? It like, takes it more of the mentality of the coaches. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying, and and that was just like the culture, and it it, it made it seem like you know, it was it was okay, like it was cool. You know, your coaches saying cuz, you hear everybody parents saying cuz, and this and that. It became a part of the culture just to even say that word. You know what I mean? And I feel like the only reason I don't gang bang now is because I'm like, I'm a cocky nigga. Like, I'm real confident. Anything that I get into, I want to be the best at. You feel me? Yeah. And I know if I want to be the best at that, it's only going to be three places. I'm going to be dead in the ground, in jail, or on a hospital bed. You feel me? So that was ruled out early. Like, I can't get to my best potential by going hard at this because it's going to be severe consequences. You feel what I'm saying? So the Rory, are they known for eating bloods in that neighborhood or what? No it's bloods, all crips. All, all crips, just a crip neighborhood. Yeah, and it's like Morovia is like the high end and Dewarty is the low end. It's above the tracks and below the tracks. So who did y'all beef with? Uh, The city, they beef with, you know, surrounding uh, 
surrounding gangs like Pasadena, um, Azusa, other Mexican gangs in Duarte, Morovia. But um, it's like the way we was raised, it was like that was normal to us. You feel me? Yeah. And at a young age, I seen homies get wrapped like and get like a lot of years. So it wasn't like rocket science to know like I shouldn't be doing that. I was involved trying to be like cool. But when I really like sat back and like <laughs> thinking like, what is you doing? You feel me? Now at the end of the day, but a lot of niggas take that non-affiliate shit and think like you're not with the shit just because you're not from you're you not chose a better lifestyle. Or, or not even that, shit. just because you don't want to follow your friends or like this and that. But like, no nigga, don't get it fucked up. Like, nigga, I was raised the same way. Like, nigga, like everything is like just how you raise in Dewarty is just it's just totally different. You feel me? Totally. <laughs> Again, in the streets, like I was, I was man. And you know, I'll be, I'll I know, be clear for the viewers. I know. I'll be thugging in the streets. Are you selling your ass or what? Hell, come on, I'll bro. Be, <laughs> the viewers don't know about <laughs> thugging in the streets, me. Nah, man. but look, yeah. And another thing, like, and pause on that. <laughs> but uh, I see how a lot of artists they they talk about what they was really doing, and, and police use that against them. And you know, Grindface is a big platform. You got a lot of people, you know, watching this. I'm not, I'm, you're not going to get me on that. I, I plead the fifth, bro. Okay, so how, and how did you benefit from winning the Artist of the Year? Uh, the Artist of the Year competition, when I first cracked off, like, with my music, um, uh, it was, it's crazy, that's a crazy story, because when I first found out about it, I was on house arrest, and, I was, and it was the last round. They did three rounds. I and, wonder what you was on house arrest for. I plead the fifth, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I was on house arrest. I was on house arrest, and um, I didn't get off house arrest. Uh, the third round, that was it. You feel me? Uh, and then out of nowhere, the day I was getting off house arrest was the day they was doing some type of wild card round. I guess they didn't like all the potential that they had in all these other three rounds. So they picked like probably like 10 or 15 acts from each round. So by the time with the wild card round, they already had probably like I want to say forty five acts, including me. So um, I did the wild card round, and probably like thirty other people performed, and I ended up taking it, and I moved on to like the championship rounds, and um, it got to a point to where you know I took that too, and you know. I was performing in front of like record executives, like, you know, Comic Music, um, Interscope and Aftermath. Um, and I won. And that was like the first time I was like really taking my music serious and like hopping out there. And with that, I was able to get my own BET commercial. Um, and I was shouting out my MySpace link. <laughs> Shout out to your Boy. Um, uh, I got my own BT commercial. I was in Source magazine. Um, what else? I got like a couple tickets to Cancun. I gave that to my mom. So um, this was a worldwide like event, uh, state event, local event. What? What? Uh, it was. So who it was. was it was. It was, it, was, it was local, but it was people coming up from up north for it. It was people all in LA, and you know, in Pasadena, that's San Gabriel Valley. So all of that too. So you know, at the time. I guess I was that nigga. <laughs> that was, you know. Okay, say for you have a younger artist trying to come up in the game, man. What kind of key tips that you would you give them? Stay true to yourself. Don't let nobody or what nobody else doing steer you from your craft. Like a lot of people, they look at what somebody else is doing and they want to focus on that without being they self. You feel me? But when you being yourself, that's when you're the most unique because ain't nobody you. So when you come up with your own flows and your own this and that, it ain't out there yet. So when you put your cell phone, you, you could just be you. Continue to be you, that's not hard. But when you're trying to continue to be somebody else, you got to continuously watch another man and, and, and watch his moves and and make sure you know what i mean that's when the faking shit and all of that like come to like 
You know what I mean? You're not, you're not yourself. You ain't gonna get blasted out. out. They're yeah. gonna find the real you. Exactly. So, um, which artist do you wish to work with sometime in your career? <sighs> It'll be probably all be LA based artists. Uh, I fuck with Schoolboy Q. I fuck with um, Nip. I fuck with Kendrick Heavy. That's probably like the top three LA artists that I would want to work with. As far as top three, like. So you want to do a track with Soldier Boy? I mean, if you want to do a track with me, like, I'm not finna pay for a Soldier Boy verse. That's, that's just what I'm not finna do. But if you want to do a song with me, I'd, I'd do a song with Soldier Boy. So if you wasn't <laughs> a. So if you wasn't an artist right now and had your focus on being an artist, what would you think you'd be out here doing? Tell you the truth, I'd probably be out here like on some whole way out shit. Like, but I probably, I probably um now that I'm like mature and like I got a business, you know, mindset. Like, you know, whatever, owning something, you know what I mean. Probably owning trucks, you know what I'm saying. Um, getting loads, pause, um, taking it back from here to like different states, but not to where I gotta do it. I would own the company and have a few trucks out and just be making money like that. The best way to go, man. The best way. When is the actual date you dropping your new album? Oh, you trying to get real uh I want actually I want I'm I'm done. I'm I want I want my lawyer, bro. I'm I'm done talking to you. Dude, it's just an album release day. Yeah, but I want my lawyer. <laughs> Grind face.